This is an image that we haven't uh, put the label on yet, but I think is, is really worth talking about. It's from David King, the designer of the Crass logo. The band Crass was uh, an anarcho-punk, kind of anarcho-peace punk band um, that started in the 70s, uh, late 70s, and ended in 1984 um, because it was Orwell's 1984, and they figured they should, uh, they should stop on that apocalyptic year. And they had a, a collectivist house called Dial House, where a few of them still live to this day. And this uh, diagram, the, the Crass logo, which we actually don't have the, the finished Crass logo. Well, here's, a, I guess, on the far right here, um, a finished version of the, the Crass logo. This diagram is an example or a story in images of how that logo came about. And David King made this illustration for Aaron Comet Bus, um, who contributed this entire archive. All the materials we're seeing here, except for this, which comes from uh, the drummer of the germs, actually, um, but also the, the Gilman Street case over here and the case of, of East Bay punk and fanzine material. And Aaron Comet Bus has uh, his own ongoing fanzine. He's had it since 1981, and it started out as documenting just kind of life, uh, punk life, life in the, the East Bay punk scene. But then quickly after he left East Bay, um, and even earlier, stopped documenting bands, started just talking about what, is, what does it mean to be kind of a punk or part of the counterculture in the United States from the 80s up till today. And he's done that in uh, Minnesota, in Florida, in North Carolina, um, and he's been in New York City for, I think, most of the last 17 years, writing about, um, writing about punk and, um, and even much more of that beyond punk, the underground press, fanzines, uh, etc. And so one of the things, maybe we can, can we look at something else here? Um, so these are right here just two, um, two of Aaron Comet Bus's early fanzines before it was called Comet Bus. And he started it with, he started making fanzines with the lead singer of Operation Ivy or the eventual lead singer of Operation Ivy named Jesse Michaels. Uh, we have some interesting Operation Ivy material here as well. Uh, but he, he took Comet Bus and then um, as, he, as he was writing, he was also collecting. And so he has thousands of uh, flyers, fanzines, stickers, photographs from the history of not just uh, Bay Area punk, but really across the world, especially with fanzines. So his uh, contribution makes this not just, you know, one of the most uh, thorough and exciting kind of uh, archives for, for Bay Area punk, but also just for the underground press in general. And it's an archive of, of the counterculture connected to uh, punk rock. Um, maybe, uh, you know, just a few other things. So, so in the early Bay Area scene, Comet Bus was a really important zine. Absolutely Zippo by Robert Eggplant was another important zine. Robert Eggplant played in a band called Blatz. And over here on the wall, um, maybe we can look at this, sorry to move you around so much. Um, but over here, we have a board game that was uh, designed, I think, by Aaron in collaboration with Blatz. And this gives you a, a kind of map of the East Bay punk scene. And here you have the, the rules of the game. And then on a number of different boards, you have uh, different things that can happen. You get punk points or you get punk points removed. So um, for instance here, Blatt's Cheaper Than The Beer, which is a seven inch record they put out, gets on Tim Yo's top 15, lose 30 punk points. Well, Tim Yo is Tim Yohannan. Uh, the founder of Maximum Rock and Roll, a really important uh, fanzine in, uh, in the punk scene, which continues to this day. And, you know, the, the irony and the joke here is that it's terrible to get promoted by Tim Yohannan uh, in, in the East Bay punk scene. This, this wall um, has some things about the, the kind of hardcore scene, the early hardcore scene in the Bay Area, but a lot of it is about Gilman Street and the 924 Gilman Street project which was and is a volunteer all ages club in West Berkeley. And here you see um, one of the early flyers promoting the, the project and asking people to come be a part of it and volunteer. And here you have a long letter from Tim Yohannan, uh, who I just mentioned, kind of complaining about not enough people volunteering or doing their job. So 
you know, punk, people might think about punk as nihilism, but here punk was really about collectivism and collective action. So let's let them through. <laughs> so this is a, a, not really a flyer, but just a list of the bands that were playing at Gilman Street this night. Uh, Green Day was playing, and they crossed out when a band had played. So Green Day was the headliner. Brent's, uh, Brent's TV from Arcade in Northern California had already played. Filth, uh, a crust punk band who did a, a split record with Blatz had played. Blatz had played, we talked about them. Juke, uh, and then they say plus some acoustic stuff. Sorry, No Soup, which was another Bay Area band. Or MTX, which is Mr. T Experience. And here you see uh, with, Mr. P with Mr. T Experience playing a show with Neurosis, uh, Sam I Am, Green Day, um, to celebrate a bunch of different records getting released by Lookout Records, which was one of the most established kind of centers of uh, record distribution and the record label that put out a lot of the early Gilman bands. And it's just interesting to look at this flyer because some of these bands are more kind of melodic punk bands and then a band like Neurosis was playing really dark and slow music. So, so this is a combination of the diversity of, uh, of different types of bands that you could see at Gilman and that the scene didn't really see itself as disconnected by sound. It was more connected by place, all, all bands playing in the same place, being part of the same community. So we have a, a number of photographs here from Murray Bowles, who was a photographer who documented a lot of the early Gilman Street scene. And then we have two pretty incredible um, archival additions to the, the history of Operation Ivy. And one of them is a letter from the drummer Dave Mello to his neighbors, telling them there's gonna be a lot of noise, my band is gonna to play tonight, and Aaron Comet Bus, who made this, uh, or, or contributed to this archive, tells us that this is the, the letter for Operation Ivy's first show ever. And Operation Ivy was a really important band uh, in the early Gilman Street scene, alongside bands like Crimp Shrine, uh, who, who Aaron played with. We have uh, their, their tour book here, but as he, uh, as he always reminds people that you know, there really wasn't one band that was more important than the other bands. It was all of these bands playing at one club and getting together and making that scene. And part of what Aaron's um, point is with this, with this archive is that the bands are important, of course, but the bands aren't everything. And a lot of his archive is dedicated to showing that musicians, but also volunteers who were working at the Gilman Street store to sell sodas and candy, et cetera, volunteers who were working security, volunteers who were working at the door to, to collect money, but also people who were putting out fanzines, people who were designing patches, t-shirts, et cetera. All of those people are as essential to anything that's punk, anything that's a punk community um, as a single band is. So he really wants to draw attention to the people who were more behind the scenes and didn't get as much recognition and also to show the, the, the diversity of, of that scene. Um, like I said before, he has a huge collection of fanzines, so anyone who wants to look at the history of the underground press should really come to, to Aaron's archive, um, here connected to the Punk Archive at Cornell. Um, and I guess the last thing I'll say about this case is one of the early bands uh, at, at Gilman Street was a band called Fang, and Berkeley, you know, has a, a major public university, and a lot of the punk scene was connected to that university. They were either the children of, um, of professors at U the University of California, Berkeley, or they were going to Telegraph Avenue, sparing for change on the street, playing shows um, in protest of apartheid at, the, at, at uh, Sproul Plaza, uh, which they renamed. And um, this band, Fang, was a band that, that drew a lot of early interest in the, in the Berkeley scene and in the Gilman Street scene.